views and opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. One of the big ways that I see um, our failure to understand that that white supremacy means if you're a non-white person, you you are always behind enemy lines. Um, I think sometimes uh, non-white people uh, we uh, we get to to where we want to just talk real loud, act like we have that army stashed away somewhere that's going to come out and protect us. Uh, you know, I'm black and I'm proud. You know, get away from me. Da, 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 just, you know, not just with the obviously we do it with the police a lot, but I see a tendency to do that just with white people in general sometimes to try to act like we're tough and uh, got that secret army. Um, and I feel like that really is a sad illustration of our lack of understanding of white supremacy. Um, can can you kind of share your view on that and why you don't? I, I've never really heard you, you know, speak really wild or get loud with a white person. The most impotent uh, creature in the form of a person on this planet is a black male. Period. No matter where on the planet they are. The most powerless person is a black male. The most powerless person on the planet in the form of a person is a black male person. But you see them walking down, picking up the sidewalk, acting like they can whip everybody. Sure, they can whip somebody who looks just like them, because that's permitted. Permitted by whom? The white supremacists. They don't care. Kill everybody in the neighborhood. So what? There's another black neighborhood gone. There's another one down the street, ready to go. What's the big deal? You better be careful about whose face you get into when you get carried away with what you can do to other black people. And what's pitiful about it is most of us know that. Very few of us don't know that. We know whose face to get into. And we know just about how much backing we have. black person in handcuffs all kinds of tattoos all kinds of long record for being able to whip everybody since ninth grade standing there in handcuffs in an orange jumpsuit in his best hairdo saying yes your honor why don't you use the kind of language toward your honor that you use with the people that you encounter right there in your neighborhood? The one that you say that you are master over. The one that you can terrorize. All the females flocking to you and halfway scared of you. Knock them around all over the place. Call them all kind of names. Why don't you call your honor that same name? Snatch him from behind the bench. No, no. See, we're great show people. Greatest show people on earth. Three nine millimeters, one in your sock, one in your waistband, one in your side pocket. Ready to take on the entire world in a movie in a homemade video or oh, passing a bus stop full of black people fixing to go to work or oh, you can terrorize them why don't you take on the champ which usually is just 
one or two white supremacists who just come and say, now, I think you'd better behave because you're disturbing my peace. Now, if you don't think I can handle you, try me. And I haven't been on this planet forever, but I've never seen a situation on a large scale or never heard of one on a large scale of any significance throughout the history of the black male, because that's who I'm talking about, who didn't chicken out in a moment of real crisis. So I don't want to hear it in this stalwart Black History Month about that all-powerful black male because I've seen our record particularly in the last I'll say just in this area of the world 60 years and we've had a few who did things the way that they ought to be done they protested in the street they carried signs they talked about non-justice Martin Luther King, people like that, Fannie Lou Hamer, Hamer uh, as a black female, uh, backing up black males who uh, got out there and tried to do something that made sense, rather than just terrorize the neighbors. And uh, that's doing what we're supposed to do from the weak position that we have. Only time we show all this bravery is when we are mistreating other victims of racism. For the most part, some exceptions, some exceptions, Nelson Mandela, exception, Martin Luther King, exception, Malcolm X exception a substantial list but well spaced well spaced all those black males in between usually the ones who are doing hard time if you look at what they are charged with most of it is mistreating whether they're guilty or not, but most of it is for mistreating other prisoners of war, the race war, people that look like themselves, can't stand themselves and want to kill everything that looks like them, and laugh about it, and call it an accomplishment. Now, I harp on this because this is, this is one thing it should be real passe. As they say in the hip-hop culture, I think they call it whack. That's really whack. I think that's what they call it. Makes no sense at all. It has been embraced in every generation. Didn't just start. As far back as I can remember, black male carrying the Saturday night razor. I'm going to cut me somebody before the night's over. Oh, yeah. Who are you going to cut? Who are you going to cut, Jimmy? Who are you going to cut, Mac? Well, I'm going over to the dance hall. Who's in the dance hall, Mac? Uh, I'm going to cut me somebody who breaks bad over at the dance hall. Who is it that's going to break bad in the dance hall, Mac? Well, uh, somebody that looks like me. Somebody I probably went to school with before I dropped out. And they dropped out. So we meet up 18 years later. And we slash each other to death in the alley. And that's supposed to be a big deal and the purpose for being on the planet. Now, there are millions of black people who think just like that. And they are not all just in this area of the world. They are south of here in places like Brazil. They look forward to that kind of foolishness. It's an old black tradition while we're talking about black history. That's a huge part of black culture. It needs to stop. And it needs to stop as of tonight. We need to do some thinking. 
and then say enough of that been there done that forget it no more gang tattoos I mean you know who are we fooling who can we really whip a very limited number of people and certainly nobody who is smarter and more powerful than we are particularly somebody who is really an army a system of white supremacy you know anything about taking that on no, nothing, zero. Better start tap dancing. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, again, I guess uh, a privilege, Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Um, I, I wanted to, to highlight something that you said there. Um, you said the, the most impotent, figure in the system of white supremacy is the black male and actually this was uh, back of the bus uh, he said that you did not say non-white males you made a distinction and said specifically black males uh, you don't feel like this non non-white males in general are in non-white males in general and the darker they are the ones who carry the label of black sometimes they're not dark ones I mean some of them are very light some of them look like they're white but they carry the label of what we call black, black, if you just want to double whammy it. Anytime you get that category, if you're talking about a black male, do, uh, you're talking about somebody who, big bulge and muscles, lots of tattoos, heavy voice. I mean, shake the walls with the way that they talk. You would think that they would know everything with the way that we talk and swagger. And like I gave the illustration before, mm. walk down the sidewalk, taking up the whole sidewalk, want everybody to move out until they meet somebody maybe about 100 pounds lighter than them, much smaller than them, but the person is white. Now all of a sudden you know how to act. That's why I say it's an act. Because you pick your place. You wait till you get somewhere close to the hood, and then all of a sudden you become powerful. Why aren't you powerful everywhere you go? Some black males never even dare step outside of what they call their turf. And when they do, when they're forced to, for some reason, all of a sudden they become very sane, very cautious about how they go about doing things. It's miraculous. They become a whole other person. Which means that the black male in the Northwestern Hemisphere in particular, the ones that I observe mostly, and the one of which I am one of, and been among most of my days, we know how to conduct ourselves under certain circumstances. Magically. We may not know exactly what to say, so we keep our mouths shut. We know when to do that. And what environment to do it in. which means that we are excellent actors. So we act like men when we are really whimpering boys. Because when we go up against somebody who's a real man, we chicken out. And we do it almost consistently every time, and we do it every day. Strong black right. male doesn't exist all right all right welcome to the cold breakers this is paradox uh, today is uh July the 18th 2017 I got T, and I also have uh, DC here, 
and we're going to be having, uh, we're going to be discussing a few things. The title of the program today is going to be, What Are You Willing to Give Up for Justice? Uh, the qu quick description is going to be Black Sacrifice to Maintain America, Power Through Race and Class, Justice or Exploitation, Western Universities Teaching Supremacy, Black Entertainers Impact on Common Life, China, Russia, and the Asian Effect, the Indigenous Revolt, the Possibilities. So we may touch on a couple of these things. We we, we will see as we uh as we go uh through some of this tonight. Uh fellas, are you there? Um, Hello? can I be heard? Yeah, yeah, you can be heard. You can be heard. Can I, can I be heard? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. That sounds kinda weird, but can you who sounds off me or you or what? Oh, it's me. I, I sound better now. Okay. Uh, yeah, you I'm good. not too loud. I'm, okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. What's going on, fellas? I ain't, I ain't heard from y'all in a couple of weeks, at least live on the, on, uh, on the internet. I was about to say, like, who, who are you fooling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, uh, that's, that's a good topic. I think that, um, you know, at all, but you know, like um, you know, Mr. Fuller normally does is, is uh, give very, very strong commentary on um, manhood, blackness, and all that. And I know that um, it's very difficult for um, victims of, of white supremacy to to hear his um, commentary. I think that a lot of times. Uh, the way he see it, you know, it's totally, you know, totally different than just, you know, a lot of different people and maybe um, we hope that that um, his message is not being lost upon people but, um, you know, just, just accept the message and just, I guess, just accept it as you, as you can and just whatever you can take from it, take from it. If, if not, then, you know, no, I think it speaks for itself, so it's no apologies for him. He said what he said and we keep it moving. But um So what I do, do you think, think it's go ahead. Well, go ahead, go. No, go, no, ahead. No, no, go ahead, fellas. No, 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 I'm good. Well there's there's um uh, OJ's parole hearing is coming up. And uh, I believe it's gonna be uh you know they gotta make entertainment out of it. And it's gonna be live casted. I think it's in the next few days or something. I don't know. They they keep they keep they make sure they keep pumping that through. I said uh I was telling someone today that uh they probably made about they probably made about uh three, four hundred million dollars off this man. Yeah. At least don't if not more. TV rights for to air those uh trials. Nah How man, they work? they nah, he getting he getting nah man. I was thinking, I mean, that, that if it was, wasn't for him, I don't think I don't think cable news and trials on TV would even exist. So really, it's probably billions of dollars. Um, he created he he generated so much attention going back, you know, back to the nineties. It's crazy when you think about how far how when was it was it the was it like ninety two or something ninety three? When was it? It's fat. Twenty years ago. Yeah, so it's been a while, man. It's been a while. Ninety five, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, DC. Yeah, I want yeah. you to go ahead. I want DC to go ahead and get his get that get that thought out that he kind of had though. Did you did you still? No, 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 no. <laughs> you about that. Now go ahead. Uh, which which one are you talking about? Uh, let's do it. No, I mean Mr. Fuller. Mr. Fuller's. Uh, I mean, we'll get we'll get into the uh, we'll get a little bit more into the into the discussion in a second. Uh, but just from a, from just a uh, or just your thought, I think you was going down the road of black male, black manhood, or or whatever, kind of going down that road as far as trying to uh, just the process, um, just to process what he was saying or trying to process what he was saying. Yeah, I mean, you know, he he comes from the position that that uh, 
you know, you you're not a, you know, we the ones that fall into the classification of blackness are not men, and uh, you know, he has a whole viewpoint and thought pattern on that, and I think that a lot of times when that is said, um, you know, a lot of people uh, may take it you know, in a certain way, which, you know, I understand totally because I know how I was when I first heard it, you know, it took me a while to, to, to be able to decipher, um, this point of view. And a lot of that have, has, has to do with just, you know, I called him one time to get a particular viewpoint on it. Um, and also just listening to him on a regular basis to kind of get people, you know, challenging, challenging him on, that very notion to get a very clear view about um, what his positioning is when you talk about manhood I think that uh, it's more of a abstract point that he's that he's trying to make uh, mm-hmm. you know about manhood that is that the definition is 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 fluid depending on who you're who you are talking to so he's saying if you display manhood in this particular setting, then why are you not doing it in all settings? You know, uh, there I guess there will be people that do it, but then, you know, I guess they have to suffer the consequences as it is, as it may. But, you know, I think he, he goes over the examples of his point, you know, how somebody can be in the neighborhood, in the hood or whatever, and, you know, walking around big and bad, bold or whatever mistreating other victims of racism, white supremacy. Then when the man come around, then, you know, they, they dip out, you know? So sometimes mm. that does happen. Mm. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's, tr- I think it's tricky. I think it's very tricky because you, you can, you can fall into a trap of individualism, you know? So I think that's where it gets kind of, it's tricky, man. That's all I can say. It's hard. To, it's hard to process. You know, but we start talking all all of it. You know, just because when I, I played it for a reason, obviously. But when you drop, when you say something, when you when you are speaking that direct and that plain, uh, you know, it's gonna sound. I put it this way: it, it's it's it's. In a, if you're already beat down, supposedly, I don't even, I don't even really, you know what's so funny? I really don't even know just because what I'm about to say really doesn't necessarily make sense, you know, but in a sense, you know, you feel like you maybe you feel, you, I would argue and say you're already beat down. So if you're already beat down, you know, why add to it? Or I was thinking maybe you know it's not like people in it's not like civilians have you know necessarily um can go and you know form a military i guess they could sort of a militia or something but it's playing with words i guess but um can't necessarily like it's a weird conversation in a sense from a power standpoint i think so if you're already in a society and you're a civilian and your job is pretty much to go to work or hang out and things are already in place and then you say that it's unusual in a sense that in a sense that I can't go necessarily go make a phone call or go somewhere else and go and, and hire you know an army or whatever to deal with a particular situation. I mean, I was thinking, like, just just thinking different things about how does it sound, you know, to people when you're hearing it. Not even to people, just to myself, in the sense that, um, you know, are you trying to break me down? Am I already broken down? You know, so it's just a weird. It, it creates a, it creates a, a lot of a lot of uh, I think a lot of questions in a sense. You know what I'm saying? So just because someone is acting a certain way and putting on bravado or putting on a certain front, you know, if they're all victims, they're all victims. If they're all oppressed, they're all oppressed. So in one sense, what are you really saying? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Maybe not. Yeah. No, no, it makes I think, sense. I think uh, part of the problem is that 
being in an oppressive system such as this, and especially being forced into the classification of black, you ha- you look for outlets to uh, for anger, or I guess it'd be a form of anger management. So, really, the only outlet that's allowed in the system for people classified as black is going to others classified just as they are black as well. I think I think at the essence, at the root, that's what that's what he's talking about. I mean, because he, you know, but he's fully, he, but the fully he alludes to the fact that um, we are in this oppressive system, and so he's just saying that. That is the that is the outlet for the anger, and it, especially when you don't have a deeper understanding of how the system works, and you're just looking at symptoms. You know, I can't can't find employment. Uh, I've been locked up. Um, you know, I'm uh, pregnant at a young age. Uh, people on strong on drugs. Just a slew, you know, child abuse just a bevy of issues that have been piled upon us and without having a deeper understanding of, uh, and this goes to mental illness, which we, what we touched on as well. Um, I, I'll let you get in on that thought. But the fact that we have issues that not, and not understanding the system as a whole and why we may be in a position that we're in people are going to look for outlets for that frustration. And unfortunately, it is amongst ourselves because we know that if it's on people classified as white, the, the, it'll be even more detrimental to us as far as what may happen to us in terms of law enforcement or what have you, or the judicial system. So um, I think that's what he's kind of alluding to there. Hmm. Yeah, I I don't know what he's talking about, but um, I I will say that it does because I can't speak for I can't speak for that person, but it does it definitely does sound like he is frustrated. You know, eighty something years old, the things that he's seen <laughs> from the nineteen thirties until now, and you got people talking crazy and really can't move a, a ant hill. Uh, so you it sounds like it's more frustration, but you know. You know, you still, you know, you still have to. I would argue and say you still have to pamper, pamper people a little bit. You know, you're talking about now. You're talking about people who, including myself, I'll speak for myself. Now, I'll stop saying the word people in day. Who might be sensitive, might be emotional, and so when I hear something like that from some old head talking crazy. You know, I'm going to definitely feel a certain type of way because it's it's like like anyone would say, it's always a way that you should talk to people. Clearly, he's not talking to anybody. He's just expressing expressing a particular emotion that he has. And so it's interesting. Um, it's interesting to say the least because he can't do nothing and he ain't solved the problem. And I haven't either. So um, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, provoke somewhat of a discussion. I, I would, I would assume. I got more of those, by the way, because he really, he, he, you know, it's so funny because he really goes in on some other <laughs> stuff. But I say that, I say that for later. <laughs> I say that for later. But, um, but like you said, DC, it is a, it is something that you do have to be able to. Um, um it's interesting. I, I put it that way. I put it this way, like, and I'm and, I, and I'm not a, I'm not a, and I'm like not sometimes. old. I'm not old old, so I think I have more of a tolerance. You know, I have more probably more of a tolerance for for him making the statements. And anyway, so it's just a funny funny thing on so many levels, though. You know, analogies are always um, up for no analogies being, being suspect, but uh, I will use this one. Uh, it would remind me of a offensive coordinator or a defensive coordinator looking at a, at a game and seeing everybody move around in pieces and motion that's the reason why they're in the press box and normally the position coaches which are I would say um, the players the people that are participating on everyday level they don't really get the chance to kind of like 
view it from the press box or even view it from you know top side even when you get up further up you know when things get to looking a little bit differently um you have a different purview about the situation then it gets less detached to you emotionally and you just see the the um the devastation of it all the damage pretty much and you you just give a a analysis from your point of view about what you are just seeing um, cuz you know some of the stuff that he that he said is not it's not like it's not true it's just his interpretation of what he has experienced with his years of living and you know studying this problem uh, of racism white supremacy it's a little it's a little it's a little tough though it ain't, it ain't it, it, it's it don't little, feel good it ain't that's what i'm saying it doesn't feel direct. great at all but, I'm, but no what i mean is that i think when i think you know when i hear it it does bring me down is what i'm saying it doesn't necessarily make me want to it doesn't it doesn't make me necessarily want to go and study or learn something it's more of a it's more it, well again it's, uh, obviously it's my opinion about it but it's funny because it's more like of a um it, it reminds me you know i don't know if y'all have any crazy uncles or mean uncles or, or uncles that are very very uh straightforward but it's in their it's their own thoughts you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just their own thoughts. So it ain't, it ain't. He ain't, you know, he ain't no philosopher. He didn't go to, he didn't go to these Yales where it, it, you know, if someone said they went to Yale or Texas A&M, then what they say must be okay, right? So he didn't go to none like that. He's just thinking about things. You know, average person. <laughs> no one knows who he is. Not trying to be nothing. Not trying to know nothing. Not trying to come up with phrases like Pan Africanism. Like he's none of that stuff, right? just a crazy just a relative of yours and like he's telling you like what you gonna do what you gonna do like that type of thing it's like you ain't gonna do nothing so, <laughs> so it's funny it's funny when i hear it it's funny in that way but like in a more serious in like in a more serious way i think you know someone would, i want to people to call call into his show just to ask him because he will give you an answer but you know it's it's uh try trying to make it trying to transfer that energy that he's putting out into something else I'm not sure I'm not sure what that does uh, you know what I'm saying like I'm not really I'm not totally clear about what that what that does for somebody because of how it because of how it sounds because to tell to say what he said I don't know what you need to know to make that make sense it's what I'm trying to tell you like how much information do you need to understand but what he said makes sense and not take it personal or not feel like that it's a it's a um, it's an attack or a threat against whatever you try whatever you personally or whatever your organization is is trying to do but using the information using the using the energy or his thought to to try to crack open another idea in your mind like to try to get you to look at it in in another way or does your does the paranoid gene kick in and you're like man he might be he might be a fed or something like what is he talking about but anyway just a lot of different thoughts you know a lot of different thoughts you really never know how anybody really feels about people so it's always a, and maybe feelings don't even matter at the end of the day you know what i'm saying it's always weird because the way you we talk about levels well i don't i talk about levels a lot so it's always funny that when i what i just said may be important at the on the field level like you were just saying but in the press box they use your analogy which i hate using by the way but i'm gonna go with it in the press box you're not looking at emotions <laughs> you know what i'm saying you print out some film you look at the, the, you know what i'm saying I in the sky don't lie man i can't worry about what y'all doing down there this is what you need to do so it's a it's a i would say it's it, it, i would say in the position that people that that i'm in I I couldn't say if it's helpful or not. I don't know. I had to think about it more. I mean, I've I've been hearing it for years, obviously, but every time I every time I think about it, I just kind of like ah, you know, is it really pushing me, you know, to new thought? Is it affecting me any kind of way? Is it making me less effective? And then of course I start asking myself, what does that even mean? Obviously, but but anyway, not to uh, beat that horse too much. <laughs> did y'all did y'all have any more um any more thoughts? 
with the with the brother. Um, put it on, just give a background on it. There's a guy. I don't know if he's still active, but it was a guy named Phoenix Jones, of an alias out in uh, Seattle, who donned a superhero's outfit and would go out like, four four or five times a night and break up fights and. Not classified as black, break up fights and you know, help people who were injured, I guess, uh, over intoxicated or whatever the case may be. Was that real? I don't even mean to interrupt. Is that actually real? Yep. Was he really doing? Wow. I thought uh, that was, was actually, just, I thought that was no, the whole I, act. <laughs> I thought that was an act. I did yeah, not Phoenix, did no, not he real. actually, uh, wow. he was actually, because he actually got, I mean, it's a, some videos of that on YouTube knocking pe- folks out uh, in the streets because Washington State is a mutual combat state. In other words, if um, two people agree to fight each other, it's legal as long as it's agreed upon. I think I don't know if that's in any other state, um, but he uses that. I guess he uses that somehow to his advantage. But he got brought up on charges. I think. A couple of years ago, for pepper spraying some folks, the police claimed that he um, pepper sprayed some white folks, ostensibly that were dancing and weren't causing any harm. But he, the charges got dropped. But I, I just, uh, I just want to throw that out there to you guys because I mean, he, this guy is suited up. He look, he almost has a costume. It looks like Wolverine, like gold and black costume. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it just makes me wonder how that type of thing is. Is it because he has this fictional, I guess, kind of uh, vibe to him, like the superhero thing? Because he has a group that he runs with, and they, they all wear um, costumes, I guess. But uh, he's granted, apparently, the uh, the police in Seattle say they don't condone it or agree with it, but I guess they grant him a certain amount of. Uh, Leeway, and you know Seattle is—I don't, I don't know what's the demographic there. It's probably mostly, mostly white. So he's probably yes. that's probably the people, the patrons of club going is probably who he's mostly uh, interacting with on a nightly basis. I just, I'll just throw that out to you, to you guys, but uh, I mean, because I mean it does look it does look unreal, right? Yeah, it didn't look real to me, so I thought it was just him videotaping himself, kind of trying to sell himself to Hollywood to become a stuntman, because that's what it looked like. But wow, that was actually real. It's very yeah, interesting. Like I a, think people should check it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's definitely something to check out. Wow, it's very interesting. Because I, I heard him even talking about, you know, how he grew up in, you know, in a city neighborhood, and he just wanted to do something, you know. Um, which is understandable, like I said, like a lot of things uh people want to to do to do things you know to do movements um and not to sit still and just remain you know stagnant i mean it's we are where we are it it seem it seems like there is something that is very communal about um human beings, you know, like people that group together and do things together to get a a task done. So it just seems like the ones that have mastered this communal thing has been able to monopolize it and focus it and get, you know, get things done by dominating other people that they deemed that were different than them. So very interesting. Yeah, I mean, and not not to disparage the brother, and I don't want to harp on it too much, but I don't believe he could get away with that type of thing in the so-called hood. You know, like, yeah, I don't think you would see a, a so-called black or white guy walking around uh, in the hood with a superhero costume on. <laughs> Unless, maybe if it's Halloween, maybe, but... Uh, I'm just kind of juxtaposing that, you know. I don't, I don't think he would see that. So, interesting. Well, there ain't that many black people in Seattle, so you know, whatever that means doesn't mean that they don't have any hoods. I'm pretty sure they got poor neighborhoods out there, but 
Yeah, I get, I get what you, I get exactly what you're saying, though. Makes sense. So, what are you, what are you guys thinking on uh, on some of the topics that we got? Well, which one would you want to delve into? I mean, there's, there's it's pretty, it's pretty well, heavy. I threw, I threw some, threw some stuff out of just, just to kind of get you guys as a. Uh, you know, you out. got, uh, you got black sacrifice uh, to maintain America, power through race and class, uh, justice or exploitation. What are you, what are you guys? Uh, want to delve into I'm pretty sure we probably won't be able to get into all of it but no probably know. not definitely not you can go for the uh, for the clickbait and do uh, black entertainers <laughs> nah we will we'll save that for later I mean that's not you know that tends to take up a lot of mental um, power uh, because it has such a strong pull because of how they have allowed and and then, yeah, let's I guess I guess we could start with this. So let's let's uh let's delve into the the whole I guess what I was saying that there is a that what what has been created if you this is just my my viewpoint and um what has been created as far as like the whole thought pattern of whiteness creating a paradigm that everybody has to live in that forces your solutions to be counterproductive to anybody else that may be in that same system so let me give you an example so if I'm somebody that is into politics and I'm saying, well, we want things in our particular neighborhood and this is how we need it because we need it the most. And, you know, you feel this way. And then the person that's across the way is saying, well, we need to get our particular, you know, roads fixed and things of this nature. And we need to have things pulled in this particular direction. There seems to be a grievance that is that is broken down by racial guidelines because the country is still even though they call it integration they have still separated groups of people or large groups of people and put them in certain silos or neighborhoods where or communities where there are majority this and then this particular group is majority that and then they divvy out the resources accordingly and then that affects schools and that affects you know, um, resources, stores, things of that nature, which causes a pathology to develop after a while. And then when the pathology develop, then you have other victims that may be in that same neighborhood or outside of that neighborhood, or even just know about people or have family members in that neighborhood that start to judge those people. So it start to be like, well, when did your personal responsibility take over? When are you going to learn to deal with your situation you see what I'm saying like so forget about Jim Crow forget about what slavery has done the more physical part of slavery um, and then forget about the the prison industrial complex which is also a form of slavery forget about all the laws that was passed during um, segregation and integration um, basically forcing people into neighborhoods and then forcing people to deal with certain conditions by law like these were laws that were passed like you couldn't sell certain property to black people you had to tax black people in um, certain communities higher than they would be if they was in a white community I mean they had all kinds of things that they did to shatter the mentality of people and then how do you cope with that with raising children and trying to give them the proper perspective on how to you know continue in a peaceful so-called peaceful environment on doing things the so-called right way that it creates this whole like I, I don't know what else to call it but neurosis that people are mentally ill we grew up in a community where people are not 
being able to be their, their truest self because they're not able to manifest their destiny fully. There is something that's in the way. But then you have other people say, well, no, there ain't nothing in your way. You're just being, you just basically, you just basically being selfish. You're being lazy. So people don't even know how to decipher on what they can and cannot do. That's how bad it's gotten. So even if there is something that you can do, there may be some people that just be like, nah, you know what? I'm good with that. I'm not even trying because I don't want to be disappointed. And then you have people that do try and then they get some successes and then they get some failures, but then they be mad at the other people that are not trying because they feel like those people are holding them back because black people as a whole are collective. You see what I'm saying? Like this whole dichotomy, this push and pull between our, our group that's forced together. And then don't even get me going with other identities within our group, the LGBT communities, the 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 women's movement. The, the 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 immigrants, the black immigrants, where you got some black people that are native born to this particular country that get mad at Africans that come over here to benefit from racism and white supremacy. Like we really can do something about it. Like that would just be incredible to me to just see black victims walk on Capitol Hill and say, no more African immigrants in this country. They're not black like me. Like that can literally happen. Just think about the damage, you know, the mental damage that we have actually experienced as a forced group together because we don't share a lot of commonalities even within this country and then to be forced to share to share the classification with people that wasn't raised here, that wasn't that don't share the slave narrative. It just keeps this constant conflict and then you got people that are here, they they gather all these different identities you know i'm i'm lgbt i'm a black woman first or i'm i'm a i'm a black man or i'm a black male i believe in MGTOW you know this this you know black men going their own way it's it's, it's a lot man and you know i'm you know i'm like you know at the end of the day is it is it viable to even think about this problem in the way that we think about it anymore like even if you're just thinking about just just black people is it even viable to think about it anymore because it seems to be that people have accepted the system to a certain degree um, whether they are, are are reluctantly going along with it or whether they're just all in with it but there is a there is an acceptance of how things are done now uh, that the viewpoint of trying to go the justice route is not doable and the way you can tell is that people are trying to reform this type of system so they rather reform the injustice of this system instead of just to replace it with a better system and we don't even have to call it justice but just to replace it with something better to start over new because the way this was built was built on mistreatment and mistreatment of a group of people in particular and the genocide of another group of people in particular so that's 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 the that's the thing that never gets past this particular country it's the reason why when you build this whole system on race the reason why race can never be forgotten forgotten um, the reason why it's always coming up in movies coming up in news coming up in police you know interactions is because the way they have formulated race as an actual construct as something that's real and people are manifesting it out it just it just keeps bleeding out and then nobody has real real cut solutions to the system and that we just all just play along and we stuck into this like this hamster wheel it seems like because it's like you know, of course, when you look at the numbers, uh, black people are, you know, being mistreated the most. Let's just put it that way. And that the numbers clearly bear that out. And that this is this was done on purpose. It wasn't something that was happenstance. Oh, it was because you didn't have education. Oh, no, this was something that you was personally attacked. Not personally, but, you know, you were systematically attacked. 
and that now you have all these different ideologies that have developed because people have been able to try to survive because that's what we've been left with. So it's almost like I can't even blame victims of racism that have a completely different view than I do because that's their reaction to the system. And me being mad at them because of their reaction to the system doesn't do any anything to, to alleviate or change the way that we're viewed in the system. It doesn't change the fact that I'm still classified as black like that person is. <laughs> it doesn't change it. So I could be mad at them. I could say you're a coon. I could say you, you're this. I could do all the name calling. I could say you're not really a black person. But at the end of the day, we're still forced into the same classification. And I think that the beginning point of trying to really, really solve this problem is to go beyond hope at this point to go beyond <laughs> beyond the actual ideals of reforming this because if you go through all the detail you you will start to see that this system is based off mistreatment so if you just took over this is black people that I'm speaking about in this very clear instance if black people just took over then you still have to bomb uh Indonesia, you would still have to go through the seas and make sure that nobody is in your certain sphere. If they do cross, then you bomb the hell out of them. You do you do disease testing just in case somebody you know overseas start to try to buck at you. You could put out a disease that can kill a whole population off. Like these are things that are done to maintain the power structure. And and I have always stated, why do you want to do that? Like, there got to be a different way. Well, there ain't no different way. Then what is this all What is all this talk for? What are we talking about? Either we're trying to end the system of racism, white supremacy, or we're not trying to end the system of racism, white supremacy. That's what I'm on. I don't believe in God, though. See, that's where I come with that. You see what I'm saying? You believe that, <laughs> that that Moses freed the Hebrews from Ramses. You know. There wasn't no reforming Egypt at that time. They had to go somewhere else. Am I, am I correct, fellas? Y'all guys know your Bible. I know y'all y'all ex-Christians are, are still Christians, still digging into your Bible every once in a while. Moses had to leave, right? He had to get those people out of there. Couldn't reform the system as it was, right? Is that is that is that not accurate? Or am I wrong on that? That they had to go to a whole new land and set up set up shop differently. Is that what is that what happened? Can I be heard? He did bring a he did bring a new law. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. New laws in place, new ways of doing things. Ways of the old way or whatever. I'm saying that clearly, clearly you know, justice, trying to bring justice, something outside of yourself, something to, something to govern your activities outside of oneself, outside of one's urges to try to rule and dominate other groups of people. Or at least that's what it comes out to be. But of course, we know that, um, you know, that's all allegory. But the point is, is that the when there's two conflicting sides and there or there's a group that's been that's been so mistreated right like the hebrews at that point the slaves the black people there was so much mistreatment at that point that there was no way that they could reconcile in the same space and to me that's that's what we're dealing with like there's no way to make it up and if even if it was white people are not going to give it to you like why would they do that and when I say my, white people I mean even the ones that don't make the decisions to the ones that do make the decisions that's not logical to do you know oh you have talked so much or you have convinced me so much or you have slept with me so much that I, hey you know what hey it's, it's good it's good we need to go ahead and make do right by you black folks without lifting up a weapon to fight these people 
because the history shows me that these people love to fight they love to kill am I, am I making sense or am, am I kind of ranting or is it not is it not connecting uh, you, you making sense to me so what do you guys what do you guys think about that though about because because when the, the the title to me says it all what are we willing to give up for justice because justice is hard man that is not easy no matter what your definition of it is it's hard if this country can't live to its constitution literally cannot live to its constitution and they call that justice <laughs> you can imagine how hard it's going to be to come out of that when you the oppressed group when you have been basically mentally damaged by this other group I mean it's, it's, it's devastating man because when you look at the lay of the land and you look at how people react to each other we have a very predatorial uh, relationship with each other and then when we get in the in the um, when we get around white people that predatory that predatory type of um, atmosphere I don't see it manifest you may try it but it doesn't manifest the same way that it does with our own people man and when I say our own people I mean people that's forced into the classification of black there ain't no choice in it I'm done. Did you guys have any comments on that or you want to get into the break or you know come back? We now we can do a break if you want. Go ahead. What were you saying, T? I was saying that we had a few minutes before break. Um, I know I yeah, said a lot, so go a, ahead and chew chew yeah, up on lot, some of that. Lot to, uh, you sound crazy, you know that, right? I know, man. I'm trying not to. Man, I wish I just man, took did. that took that blue pill man I knew I should have took that man right when I just got into this whole deal I said you know what this rabbit hole goes too deep man if you're trying to solve the problem if you're trying to monopolize and you're trying to mistreat then you know you do what you do yeah but isn't there, isn't there too much I'm not going to say too much I mean, that's a word, but isn't there enough information out there to uh for those who are trying to exploit to either one know better or uh, two they or two would you say they just don't they just don't know like I mean literally in this day and age you have to be in some podunk town or it's on this rock somewhere to not have access to some of these things in other words, if you want to be a good, a great exploiter, you got to know some of the truth, right? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So, that's my thing is that, um, you know, how much, and maybe this is not the right word to use for it, but how much of that is human nature? I mean, it, humans are some whatever we want to use that however you want to use that word so must have messed up individuals on many different levels and you can say that's part of the system or that's just you know they're born with two different sides I don't know but the fact that it matters you, you gotta know some truth to mislead and, and, and exploit people But wouldn't that wouldn't that tell you everything that you need to know on how devastating this system is if you have a group of people that's been able to 
monopolize the fact that they know that human beings are collective, that we move like this, and that your that your mentality is grouped together, like that is like a herd type of mentality for the most part. That that's what that yeah. is, and that you force this group to be together, even though they're not really together. You can see it. You can just see people just being mad. You stay steadily angry. But you don't know you don't know why that you're just feeling this way and that they give you definitions for who you are, you know? And it just it just seemed to have this more this devastating effect on groups of people that are trying to self define themselves even within this system. So it becomes very, very, very difficult to try to say, well, you know, this is the solution. No, no, no. Your solution is nonsense. No, this is the solution. No, 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 no. That ain't the solution. This is the solution. So you got about 500 people. I would say 500 people that got good ideas, but you need cooperation, right? You need help doing things. Because we we are a group of people that that collectively you have to have a group that that falls in line and you know feels what you have to say. Like for instance, if your if your message falls on deaf ears and people don't agree with what you're saying, then people tune you out. Then nobody hears. It's like hearing a tree in the forest that nobody's around. Doesn't mean that that tree didn't fall. It's just nobody heard it. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? It's just. You know, it, it, it's sort of to the analysis of that, the people that can reach the most people have the most effect, whether they're wrong or incorrect or whether their message is doing the most harm. But collectively, we feed into that. Um, they have been able to find a way to do algorithms algorithms through YouTube. So they have known how to actually gather people throughout your interest to whatever videos you watch on YouTube. And they filter you to your group. So every video you get, every suggestion you get is basically within the purview of what you have actually watched. And the more you watch those, the more they're going to give you those videos. And I'm pretty sure people fall in and out of their group, but everybody still falls in. So anyway, we're going to go to break and um, we'll come back with finish up some of the more of the topics on the, on the other side next hour. We get a cold breakers. Podcast and live program scheduling, visit us on the web at blacktalkradionetwork.com. All right, this is the Cold Breakers. We are back for the second hour. Uh, this is Paradox. I also got uh, T and DC on the line. You can always reach us uh, if you have a comment at uh, 1-866-510-9025. Uh, press star star if you want to make a comment. We'll just kind of pause and let you go ahead and start speaking if we're if we're already speaking. Uh, you can also catch us live on the first and third Tuesdays of the month at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Pacific. I can never say that right. Um, as well, please visit uh, BlackTalkRadioNetwork.com. Uh, definitely check out uh, BTR Community. As well as uh, our old podcast and, and other um, other hosts and shows as well, uh, with a variety with with a wide variety of topics, uh, you can definitely find on the website as well. All right, so the question, fellas, is did, did, did you did either what are you answer the questions or what are you willing to give up for justice, or was you speaking more, uh, you know, for all for all people in a sense. No, I can't speak for all people, uh, me me personally, but uh the the <laughs> that 
that question is so is so hard hitting as far as like what you're willing to give up for justice. I think that um that what it does is just kind of give you a way of just kind of going through your thoughts to kind of test your thoughts and your ideals of is it really okay to really continue to act like um, this system that we're living in right now is just you know I'm okay with the way things are like is there something really really wrong and am I willing to 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 give up uh, a more comfortable position in the system to begin to begin the process of eliminating or even thinking about eliminating this system even though a lot of people don't really believe that that's a reality but do I do I do I give my energy to doing that or do I give my energy to be all in into the system blame other victims of racism white supremacy name call put in more negative energy and to continue the cycle that we've been on for for the longest so um i would say you know do i do i give up my my um comfort uh my mental comfort within the system that's that's the only way that i can that i can give it do i give up my comfort um, you know, giving up your comfort as far as mentally trying to think about it because thinking about it is hard. It's, it's difficult because there's so many challenges when you really look at this system for what it is. It's global. Um, it's widespread. Um, it's massive. Um, it has a hold on everybody mentally, including me, myself. And um, am I willing to to fight that long haul mentally? Uh, which would I would imagine give you you know depressed days sort of like Mr. Fuller sounded like he he was he was pretty much frustrated by you know some of the things that he was seeing and that's that's what I'm saying like it's like um, everybody has a different reaction to the system so that's that's my yeah, answer I, I don't know if I I don't know if I really answered it properly but go ahead T you know it's interesting is that until I uh, heard DC's explanation, I thought that that question was was predatory, because it was almost like to me saying it was like a carrot on the stick, like if you want justice, then you have to be willing to give up something to get it. Uh, instead of it being a thing of you, you should be born into a system of justice, not, not a uh, bartering type system. But what DC was saying about the fact that giving up mental comfort in other words the the different and this may get into the western university uh, teaching white supremacy conversation but willing to you know your, your cup overflow with, with ignorance so being willing to re-examine a lot of the indoctrination that we've been fed and taught for years uh, chief among them being the follow the leader archetype which to me I think comes out of the religious dogma you know whether you look into whatever I'm not going to name particular deities or, or personages but you get the idea you know, look into certain these certain uh, people or spirits for uh, guidance. So I think that is what creates the the group tent to a degree. Instead of people making up their own minds about about things, nothing wrong with obviously listening to others and you know gaining insight based upon their experiences, but constantly following a group way of thinking, it can be detrimental when you're dealing with people who run this type of system, they've obviously studied uh, certain behaviors that are typical amongst so-called humans and they've exploited them. But the 
but that's uh, that's what came to mind when once DC kind of started talking about giving them certain comforts, especially as it relates to the mental traps that we have that have been placed in our minds to contain us within certain patterns of thinking, and it's reinforced by media, entertainment. I mean, a number of things. Uh, yeah, that was uh, so. I appreciated that. Hmm. Huh. Okay. So I think I think we was thinking. Um. You know, when I say justice or exploitation. You know, it feel it feels like I maybe not feels like I guess it is, in a sense. You know, if you're taking a position of justice, how do you? This is this really this probably I guess for either one of you guys, but if you're taking a position for justice, how is is there a way to kind of deal with? trying to uh, I guess minimize the exploitation part of your life or you either you exploiting yourself or or you being exploited does that make does that make does that question make sense break that down a little bit just that you know if you're fighting for justice or if you're trying to move yourself into that space you know, maybe trying to, you know, ch- trying to change things in different ways or trying to change one's mind or just trying to uh, get a better understanding of what this is and what's going on versus um, being consumed through exploitation. Like, um, you know, maybe, even maybe you know, uh, job employment, um, being caught up in, you know, uh, buying lots of goods and services, you know, putting on fronts, um, you know, trying to be something that you're really not, you know, bravado, whatever, you know, you know, nice cars or not even that, but just, just, you know, I look at, I look at the environment from a, you know, just from, from a day to day perspective of, I don't want to say, you know, I'm pimping myself in a sense, but, you know, like, you know, that you, you know, that you're being taken advantage of, you know, exploitation is happening. Either you may be mistreating a female a family member, um, you might be um, the way you're being used at your job, or at your, you know, if, or or if you have a business, if you're using people in your business, just being consumed, I think, by by the system or this system, in a sense that it seems like the way this place is set up, it feeds on exploitation. Like you have to be, like I, you know how. If you try to like stand up for something, like if you go to your if you go to your job now and you and you take a hard position, they'll basically just get rid of you. And for example, uh, this is going to be a bad example, by the way, but for the on the black entertainment thing, I want to mention to tie it into kind of tie it into exploitation. If you take a person like Colin Kaepernick, right, which I don't want to harp on too much, but you know somebody came to me and said. You know, did you hear what um, I won't even say the player's name, but you hear what what, the, what a particular uh, ex player said about Colin? And I was like, you no. Know. So they told me what they said, and then they this is a black male. Then they said they agree with it. You have and of to course, say I had name. to. I had you have to, to say the name of the victim, man. <laughs> you have to for context, man. So it's okay. You already dropped Colin Ka- Colin Kaepernick. I think people know who you're talking about, but just in case, you know. Right. So. uh uh, Mr. Vic, Mr. Michael Vic. So, so uh, I guess a reporter stuck a microphone in his in his face. I don't know the details. Honestly, I don't care. I try. I, I've, I've been trying to do a better job at staying off of social media. If I'm, you know, trying to stay away from from YouTube and uh, a lot of things. To be honest, which even though um, just just if if I'm on no if I'm on those things it's for a very particular reason put it that way it's not something I'm going to be perusing and just kind of like you know got to have the phone in my face or have a computer in my face 
to, to look at stuff is my point. So typically when I go, I'm trying to get into a, into a mode where I'm going for a purpose. I'm looking for something very specific. I'm not just watching trash, trash, you know. But anyway, um, but so when they made the comment, and again, you know, what you notice about people, if you take a position, if you take a position um, that tends to be counter to whatever the television is telling somebody, or whatever a book is telling somebody, or whatever a a news article is telling somebody, it doesn't really matter where it's coming from. It's really, to me, not their their thought. It's not a, it's not an original thought, and it's not their thought. It's like this continuous stream of trash. And so they so they was telling me about it, and I said, well, you know, because I think. I think in one way it's maybe not that big of a deal, you know. In, in one way, I'm probably making it too deep, and when people interact with me, I probably take things too far. But on, you know, I say that because that's how people, it, that's how people take it. But then on the flip side, it's like it's my duty to make it to make it deep in the sense that you're gonna come and waste thirty, you know, you know, two or three minutes of my life, my time, telling me about trash. And then I'm supposed to play along with the conversation, you know, and, and sit there and, and debate about nonsense. And so I was like, "What you're saying, you know, I, I totally rejected the whole the whole situation. Obviously, uh, you know, he, you know, I don't know either, none of these people. These people are on television, you know. I mean, who, like, I mean, really, like, it doesn't even really matter at the end of the day in, on some level. But then on another level, it really does show how things continue." And um, talking about someone's presentation, if you are a, a black person, and you know, for and for all I know, as the black, you know, whoever you are, and whatever whoever's in your ear, whoever's pulling on you, I don't know what they're telling you or what they're doing to you to get you to say what you're saying. So I don't even know if it's coming from a genuine place, and I know it's not because of the person that I'm talking about. If you look at if you look at this, if you look at Kaepernick's upbringing, where he comes from, et cetera, clearly he knows what to do uh, to get whatever he wants in, in this environment. As much as his, as much as he can take himself based off of, uh, of what's allowed, and so to have somebody else who is in his same group, um, just talking sideways and strange. You know about what what he should do and what he should do with his hair and all this just stupid. It's just it's almost unbelievable to be honest, which in so many ways. But the person says, "Yeah, I agree with Vic," and I just had to sit there and really we had to had to really spend like thirty minutes kind of breaking down. Like that's you you and, and again, this is my opinion. I don't think you're seeing what you think you're seeing. What's my whole point? I think that that you're missing you you're really missing what's going on. There's something deeper here. Um, that really points out how race is used, how racism is is used, how you know how people act in this environment, you know, and 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 since you don't really know what what you really don't know any truth, you know, like I said, I, like I was telling the person, I haven't heard um, you know Colin really say anything ever uh, that I can find. I mean, he he, and I'm sure he probably wants a job. But I also believe that he's taking a hard position, so he gets what he gets. My point in bringing it up was when you take a stand at a job, to me it's almost like, well, damn, you've been exploiting me the whole time, but as soon as I get an opinion or get an idea in my head or I take a position, there is no support. There is nobody coming to protect you. And these are things you clearly clearly know. And don't get me wrong, people do, a person like him or people – in business or people who were in unions before they decided to, to pretty much get rid of unions for the most part um, you know taking a stand you know uh, um, in some instances you know did yield some benefit at least in the short term but you know in, in, the, in the bigger in the bigger scheme of things when you take the when you take hard positions you you will t- typically I think be you know alone or or, or at least you know, your groups, your group would get very small. Put it that way. Your friendships would get small. A lot of your family, most likely, will probably start to uh, create some separation and kind of put you in a category because you're going to impact their lives and what they get access to. But anyway, I just wanted to say that real quick while we were uh, talking about exploit. They just just had my thoughts around the exploitation 
versus the justice and how you we can just get so occupied by either exploiting ourselves, being exploited, just the whole process of how uh, consumerism, capitalism, the, the environment that kind of occupies a lot of our space is around spending and putting on fronts and trying to be something, trying to have something, and then, you know, which which projects an idea of what you look like, you know, white picket fence, single family home, you know, two cars, three kids, you know, just the we're, we're strivers or striving, I should say, in a sense, uh, for a lot of things. But in, anyway, I digress. Did DC, did y'all have anything on just justice? And that's what I meant, T. By the way, as far as when I was saying, when I was just thinking about justice versus exploitation, just the the time and the energy that you spend. Either being exploited, or 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 you doing exploitation, or just just how it consumes so much of you. So when you're trying to fight for justice, when you're trying to give up things for justice, you know, is that something that we you need to have? Or is that something that we should be looking at to have to give up? I put it that way. Did y'all have anything on that, or yeah, Colin Kaepernick, uh, he in a sense. I guess maybe in the through white so called white eyes in a sense he gave up his black card by accepting this large contract with the NFL um, in order to be accepted and gain a, another level of well another level of acceptance and therefore he has no no dog in the fight of justice essentially um, so I, guess, I think that kind of also lose to, uh, I mean I think we say the same thing but I was just thinking about the fact that you know once you are given certain access and privilege and even even uh, speaking of access and privilege when you were talking about if you take a certain stance within a company it can get you fired that also depends on your level of access or your authority or your hierarchy level within a company but if you're an executive you can make hard decisions all day. Um, you're a chairman of the board or you're CEO, CFO, CIO. That's what they do uh, by and large. So, I mean, the consequences are, the stakes are high, but so is the reward. Um, so I think that based on that level of access and privilege, you're going to be granted a lot more leeway in terms of creative thought and not necessarily... Uh, I mean, you know, they talk about publicly traded company. You do have to kind of answer to the shareholders as well. But you have more leeway to do those things versus someone who is, someone who's on the phone, for instance, talking to, you know, on the front line, talking to customers every day. They're expected to do A, B, C, X, Y, Z, day in and day out. Anything outside of that, I mean, for the most part, it's going to be, you you be chastised for going against the grain is what is how they will consider it. And so since Kaepernick to make the correlation is not he isn't uh, he he is a front he's front line employee essentially if you think about it. He's a front line employee that everyone sees on the field. You know, people don't see the all the the uh, hundreds of staff that works behind the scenes to create these productions. Whether it's the the the, uh, the trainers, the coaches, the assistant coaches, the, uh, the, the 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 people that work for the TV stations and the camera crews, these are all the people behind the scenes that are moving and shaking, or the, even the people that are hired, up, like GMs or even the owners. Mm-hmm. Really, the only owner that you see on the field is who, with Dallas, right? Mm-hmm. I don't I don't really th- I can't really think of any other owners that. Except for maybe the guy that uh, in Minnesota can't think of his name. Arch, I think his name was. Um, but you don't really see the owners on the field, and so that's to make the correlation between the corporate structure, because it is a corporation, and so. But that's the corporate structure versus uh, Kaepernick, who's a frontline employee. You can't go against the grain. You can't do it. And I think he knew to a degree that. I think he kind of knew his career was in jeopardy anyway. And so, uh, I guess he figured, well, hey, because he he knew when, when he started doing, or even I'm sure he was thinking about it. And by the time he decided to go public with it, 
he already knew in his mind that he was done. He was finished. So, because he, I mean, I, I'm out of sight. He took a trip over to um, Africa. Uh, I think him and his wife started some type of foundation, correct? So, um, he's even taken to a, a further extent because he, he already knew. He knew he was finished at that point. So, kind of like when you're on your job and <laughs> you go into the job and you're like, this is the last day that <laughs> I'm going to deal with this type of foolishness. Mm, you know, yeah. or if XYZ happens, I'm quitting. And, you know, you just walk off the job. You know, you, you made up in your mind that this is it for me. And I'm going to tell you what makes it what makes it so powerful on, on, on one end, as much as I think it's like weird, you just made me think about one thing I will say that I think is important is can can anybody save him? Can anybody help him? Better question is, is anybody helping him? Is anybody, can anyone make a phone call for him? You, you know what I'm saying? Like when you think about power specifically and and again, we, you know, a whole lot of friends going on. And so it's interesting that in 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 their year of 2017, as much as much cash as everybody's talking, uh, black people specifically, I'm talking about just so I'm clear. Uh, it's interesting that just on a very and we're, this is very surface, right? The focus is on white people, very surface in a weird sense that nothing can be done. We're we're literally we're, we're literally watching a person being treated a certain way. Which is going to teach millions of people how to act. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. It's a very I know I'm not I'm not an expert, but it's a weird thing because when you see examples like this, and it's like well he's disrupting something, he's impacting something that affects black people, the everyday black person, the cameraman, other athletes, etc. Putting pressure on them, making it uncomfortable at ESPN and and, and FS1, making it uncomfortable. And think okay. about it in this in this time frame, people have. Let me say it this way: based off of what I've seen and heard, people have figured out ways to get around while to to, to let this happen and not kind of talk about it. You know what I mean? Kind of work around it. Kind of say, you know, they'll say something like he's rich or you know he's an athlete. You know, come up with something to try to let this kind of just fade fade itself. Away, right? It's his. It, maybe it's his fault, or well, he should have did it differently, or you know, a lot, a lot of realness happens when these type of things happen. Just in the business world, not, not in, not to me, in a real, real world sense, but just kind of in business. When you think about, or really in any, any kind of environment where you're around blacks and, and other non-whites and white people, where you know, is anyone, is anyone at these jobs saying I support Cap? Not necessarily support him from from an athletic perspective, but the position that he's taken, whatever that position may be, or do you already know just by him, just by how he's being treated in his industry, that it reinforces? Watch your mouth, be careful, you know, make sure you stay straight, don't get too loose, don't get too far out there. It's just a weird, very, very weird, um, very, very weird thing. And I'm sure he's getting support. I'm not tracking his stuff. I'm I'm assuming he's getting some support. Um, from some of the conscious people out here, I guess I honestly, honestly, am not researching it, so I really don't know. I, I don't, you know what I mean. But it's 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 a very strange uh, situation because you can justify it out, right? You can kind of say, well, you know, he's you know he deserved it, or or you know, you know, it's just a it's just a funny thing. But I I, I hold right there. Go ahead, DC. Well, um, the 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 victim of racism. Uh, the victim of racism named Colin Kaepernick is is a very um I would say he's a very unique uh person to study when it comes down to how the system has reacted to his necessary uh stand what he deemed was necessary in his mind to do um, I would imagine that that Colin um is very familiar with Mr. Nilly Fuller, uh, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. I think that is not very, very hard. Probably, probably even with this particular 
network, uh, Black Talk Radio and our programs. Uh, I would imagine that he's very, very aware of the different conscious thought that's out there. And when you say, um, what would you give up for justice? Being that he was already on the downside, not the downside, I would say, having uh, an up and down year. Um, He had a pretty decent year last year. Good enough to remain in the league, but of course, you know, what are you willing to give up for justice? And I think that in his mind, seeing that, you know, literally there's no black ownerships, uh, no black owners in the NFL, uh, last I checked. So everybody that he works for uh, in that particular field is generally white. All the people that's in management for the most part are white. There are a couple of general managers that happen to be black, but I would imagine even the people that surrounding them are white people also. These uh, corporations are almost like plantations, pretty much. Uh, Each NFL team has a very significant hold or very significant financial standing in their respective cities. Um, I don't care what city it is. It holds a part of that particular city. Uh, it affects everything from traffic, parking, um, the economy, the interest of the city, and as of the personality of the city also. Um, some of the teams are so connected to uh, its community that that the community actually literally owns the team, and I think the Green Bay Packers is an example of that. And uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that Colin Kaepernick understood exactly what the sacrifice was that he was making and that's what I mean by when you make an actual stand and I respect him always for that because he would still be in the league if he did not take that knee um, there's no doubt in my mind that he would be on somebody's team maybe he actually may may actually be a starter for one of the French teams in the league um, he's not an actual top quarterback anymore well he probably could be but I don't think that that's his focus anymore I think his focus is clearly on uh, the system of racism, white supremacy, and if that is the case, um, how can you, in good conscience, you know, do some of the things or drift your energy into some of the things that it would take to be so successful at playing football? If I, if I'm not mistaken, playing quarterback in the NFL is not is not easy. Um, it takes a lot of your time. It takes a lot of your studying. And I can imagine that probably with him doing all the other things that he was interested in, given his mental mental um, his mental faculties to to the struggle, so to speak, that that may have taken away from the NFL. And uh, I'm pretty sure that that's a, another reason why um, NFL teams are not willing to sign him, even though they know that he will make a good backup. They just they just don't see any reason to employ him for trying to solve the problem of racism, white supremacy, even though he can't solve it. But, you know, make a dent into trying to solve the system of racism, white supremacy that's out there. So I think it's very, very interesting to see how um, they have reacted to um, this person that's 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 in the classification of black that has a white parent. Very interesting, by the way. That whole um, that whole construct of how he still just pushed into our group, and you know he <laughs> he actually has a white parent. So it's this is always is always very interesting when that when that when that's part of the equation. But did you did you have a did you have a thought on how uh, black people are you know the average black guys or black female is receiving? You know, receiving that information, a lot of messaging that's happening with Vic making the comments about attire and presentation. But and people, people are like, yeah, that makes sense. We're gonna go with that, and not really thinking about this. Colin Kaepernick was raised in what Utah, or by adopted white parents, Utah, wherever the hell, Wyoming yeah. or something. Yeah. I'm sure he, I'm sure that he knows how to act accordingly. <laughs> and I see he's made he made a conscious decision to be this way for whatever reason so you can't those are not the same it's not the same thing but I say you got to watch out for people who are who are who have other agendas 
Well, I think he responded. It caused a, a lot of a lot of confusion. I think he responded with a tweet of the Stockholm syndrome, giving a clear <laughs> definition of it as a <laughs> response. Funny. That's so funny. That's that's what I mean. I think that he he has made a clear decision. So stay tuned. You know things do vary in the system, so they can make things very difficult. Well, you know, you. you know, you know what I find fascinating is that um when he like they found him doing it. You did you remember, you remember how that how that happened? You know he misbehaved. But he was a, he was a, he's a backup, right? And you notice how they just sort of found it after the fact. Mm-hmm. Don't you think that was weird? Well, he was a starter like, at the like, time. No, nah, I thought he was. I thought he wasn't a starter when he started sitting. I thought he was already on the bench, and they didn't nah. even notice him. They didn't even notice that he was doing it. They said he was doing it months before or something, right? Or many, you know, multiple games before. Or am I wrong about that? If I'm not mistaken, I think that he was the start. I could be incorrect. You may be right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't. I don't really remember it as. Uh, right. As I yeah. as I recall, he was he was he was on the bench. He wasn't starting. We we all forgot about him, and he was quietly sitting for the national anthem for multiple weeks. And they, I'm, and when I say they, I don't even know who I'm talking about. But they so happened to notice that he was sitting after a few weeks of him doing it. It just happened. Someone just happened. I'm like, well, I don't know who these people are. I guess they happened to notice it and thought it was peculiar. But to me, it kind of reminds me of uh, the guy from, um, even from the, uh, the, which is so weird, the guy from the Big Three League, um, the Ice Cube uh, thing that he doing, uh, uh, Momad, Momad, Raif, yeah. Am I saying his name right? Raif, yeah, yeah. right? Oh, uh, dang! I, I, it's Mo, I think name the first name is Momad. I think, but um, yeah, Momad. I think it's like I'm. I'm, formerly, I'm sure I'm formerly known as Chris Jackson was his... right. Chris Jackson, dang. CJ. Yeah, but CJ. uh, he's an example of a person who changed his name. Right, he set for the national anthem, which no one even realized that you know he had did that back in the day and he got punished for it you know it sent the message out it sent the message out to the to everybody and and they uh they thoroughly dismissed him thoroughly dismissed him and again it's still an example of well and you know what's so funny i wonder what kind of message it sends to to the, to the individual who makes the stands because you know no one's going to save you you on your own you know it's not like someone can come help you out, right? Can can stop it from happening or put a phone call and say, yeah, we know. I understand he's not standing for it, but this is why, so just deal with it. Like, no one I know, no one on the planet that I know of has that kind of leverage. Well, it's like, that- uh, Mr. It's like Mr. Fuller normally says. It's like you would get other victims to help you, but normally those other victims that are helping you are normally receiving aid themselves from somebody that's white, so... It's still going to lead to that to that particular construct because of how they set the system up. It's just what I mean is that what, what they do what they do know. And specifically talking about black people, not what, what not their own what they got going on as far as uh, uh, anarchists and and uh, and people who are who are who are anti uh, democratic, etc. But as far as dealing with the, with our group or how we've been classified anyway, just being in this particular group Mm -hmm. we also have to behave a certain way and it's it's so unusual in a sense that you really do have to behave a certain way and you are so called a a, you know a GAM you know what I mean like it's like well that's you know if, if I decide politically to take a stand or if I decide that I've been mistreated I happen to read a book I happen to interact with someone and they kind of give me you know kind of wake me up that I get punished for it what I what I what I what I was wondering about just what you were talking about you or T can kind of respond but just that is that a power issue when if I take a position does that does that does that expose anything right so 
if I decide to stand up or sit down or whatever, who can save me? Who can protect me? Who can say, well, you know what? You're taking a, you're taking a position, but you are still a participant. You're still involved. You know, so we're going to make a phone call and just make sure that you can do what you're doing and still maintain your, your job. That you know, I mean, sense, would, would it be the NCAA? Would it be the uh, nah, not not these for, groups not out for, here can can go and just no? It exists. It exists in the um, in the public call, corporation sphere, I mean, but but it doesn't really exist in a private uh, enterprise sphere. So, like playing for NFL teams, you you there's no they decide on who who they want on their teams it's clearly it's clearly to the the owner's discretion or who they deem in charge and then even even then if the owner wants to you know uh overrule a decision made by somebody that's under them then they can do that um that's just that's just part of what the what what that is and all the owners except for um one one person i think are white males I do think that there is a uh, well no not all of them are white I think the one for Minnesota not Minnesota the one for Atlanta I think he may be Middle Eastern I don't know if he falls into the classification he may he may not Um, I do know that there is one white female that's also the owner of a team Mm -hmm. but uh, pretty much it's uh, all white males in their families um, that's what I was saying about that's what I was saying about how crazy it is just because it's such a real thing. Like, if you don't stand up for this flag, like, you know how people will say, like, these conspiracy people, right? Like, people who talk about what's real and what ain't real, including myself, of course. But can, can I can I say a, this, though? A, can I say this one, one time, but right before you get started? The ideals, what I was saying earlier about justice, right? The ideals of this nation, Colin made a point to state that all I'm asking is for this country to live up to its creed its constitutional laws about how to treat everybody as equal and I don't feel like I should stand until I notice or see a significant difference in the treatment of people of color he didn't even say black people he just said people of color which can mean a whole host of things but just to say that Hey, until I see a difference or notice a notice a difference or see that there is some kind of movement going on, then I would I will continue to take a stand, not take a stand, but I will continue to kneel or sit during during the actual national anthem because it doesn't mean anything because it's on false ears. Nobody nobody's living up to the particular creed. Nobody's even trying to. So I just thought that was interesting when you got to the justice part also. Go ahead. Sorry about that. <laughs> I just I just filibusted you, man. That's that's my bad. Go ahead. Oh no, you, you you threw me off. But anyway, I will say this um about what you about what you just said. I think that um I think that dealing with I mean the best word I can use is dealing with an empire. I think it's I think it's ridiculous. I think it's all ridiculous. You know. Uh you know not not of course all of me thinks that, but just a part of me just as I'm as I'm talking out loud. And again, as we all as people have to understand this program is really for well, I can speak for myself. It's for me to kind of talk things out and just kind of have discussions about different things, not 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 a lot more than that in my from my from my perspective. Just trying to get get some ideas out there and just think think through some things. But um, I look at this as an empire, and I mean I'm I'm so clear I'm so crystal clear on that 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 I can kind of drop into a lot of different things and, and have conversations. But like like what you just said to me sounds so ridiculous in one sense. Like you know he takes a knee, he takes a stand, he doesn't stand up for the flag, he gets punished for. And the reason why he's doing it is is to make some thing that's to make these things called laws uh apply to to people of color and it's almost like well this is an empire it's you know what you know what it reminds me of matter of fact it's a great t did you have anything before i keep keep running my mouth 
I normally got like 15 minutes left, so I don't no, want to rant ahead. too much before I before I just go all the way out there. No, but uh, I say it real quick. It just kind of reminds me of like a pimp. You know, you know, it kind of reminds me of. You ever seen? Uh, y'all ever seen? Um, what's the sister name who used to do the Judge Show? Real beautiful. Uh, real beautiful sister. A little bit older. Judge Hatchet. No, 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 no. The, the other lady. She was before Judge Hassett. You know, beautiful brown skin. Used to wear red lipstick. Had a short haircut, like, like, uh, like an old school Halle Berry type haircut. Um, I just can't catch her name right now. But anyway, she had, um, you know, she used to get these people that you know, it's relationship stuff, right? And she would get these people to come into her courtroom, and she would say like, they would ask, you know, they would they would argue about whatever over some little money, not nothing big. And you know, it, then she would get into their personal lives, and she was like, well, you know how they always say, well, you may, you know, she, you knew she was a hooker or a prostitute or a stripper or just not to not to obviously demean females, obviously, but just that you knew that, um this is who you married and when you married her y'all never agreed that she was going to stop doing anything that's my whole point point. and then on the reverse side not to bash men but on the reverse side just how you knew he was wild you knew he was a freak you knew he was out of control but you married him anyway but now you're sitting in my courtroom complaining and it's like but you knew what you you, you know what the, you know what this is or like you know how a pimp has women in a sense I hate that these are terrible examples but you know he has women and they're like well why are you treating me this way it's like well I'm a pimp or like you know you you can, you can take you can take um um I forget who it was uh brother Larry <laughs> brother Larry up in New York he was making a, a, a comment about uh lions and lions and zebras and and just how uh uh just just the interaction and the behavior like you know what this is so like all the things you're saying doesn't it doesn't mean anything, and so it's it's a it's 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 always interesting even for myself to watch evolution happen where, you know I think DC you had mentioned about what Martin Luther King was saying I think in one of his one of the things he was was speaking of that we was talking about recently, but just that people are speaking like this is not an empire, it's a it's a it's a very unusual thing. And I know that we're constantly getting fed from movies and TV shows and, and from just driving around your, your, your cities and stuff that um, you may think it's something else. And it's kind of hard to live in that space, understanding how everything is tracked, monitored, registered, controlled, and how it's evolved to that. So maybe historically, obviously, maybe not so much. But it has it has the empire itself has gotten stronger, has gotten more um has more continuity, has more uh more um uh, more experience, you know, has grown, has 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 became more solidified, and and so when you kind of take a a, a a a fresh look at it, you you kind of you can I think we can kind of see like well, okay, so what are the qualifications and definitions? And rules of an empire, right? Not not nothing else but that. No other words. You know that means that there are people in charge dictating. This it's an environment structured a very specific way to keep a certain amount of control, to extract, to exploit, to maintain, to manage, um, and to dictate. Right. So if you if it's almost like once you get to the point where you where you believe that all these things are true things. Everything else kind of to a degree falls kind of falls to the wayside. So you can always have conversation about a lot of different things, but it's almost kind of weird. It's like, well, you know, you're under a, you're under warmongers. You're under people who have been fighting wars for a thousand years. They're still fighting wars. They have never stopped. Like I'm looking at these people talking this morning about um, whatever healthcare, whatever the hell they're talking about, and I'm just like. <laughs> They're still at war. Like it's, it's it's almost like it's second nature. And then we're talking about justice. We're talking about being treated fair. You're talking about constitution. What are you talking about? Like it doesn't even make any. I'm not to be ranting, obviously. Sorry, not to be ranting, but just that 
if we've established that you're under a group of people that are warmongering monsters, right? We've established a position. To me, all other questions could be answered. So the so then the position is well, you would ask, what do you do about it? You you may ask, um, uh, what can be done about it? What does the future look like? And what are we willing to give up for justice? What are we willing to give up to put an end to it? What are we willing? These are just ideas, obviously. These are just thoughts. You know, what are you, what are you willing to do um, uh, to make this stop? And and I would take a hard position, a firm position, that that uh, worrying about constitutions, worrying about rights, is foolish and irrelevant. But that's just my that's my light opinion about it. That's just a part of me. Other parts of me think different things. But just just in this just kind of in this thought process that I'm in now, I, I'm just I I can't. You know the the it all it, it the amount of sacrifice I think that's required for justice will will take care of itself, right? It's going to happen. It's happening. One reason why they're I think one reason why they have to war constantly. I think one reason why they're still building you know aircraft carriers. The one reason why I think they're constantly um, trying to figure out new ways to kill and manage. It just tells you that human that 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 non-white people. Specifically, black. Just to focus on us, stay focused on us. We are we are probably rejecting this environment constantly. So I I, I know D had mentioned mental illness and 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 this other stuff that you you know I'm I don't know about none of that stuff. Maybe maybe not. I think that I think that at our at at the core of us, I think that um that we are rejecting this environment. I think that I think the struggles you're seeing is probably the rejection of the environment that they have to continuously day in day out tirelessly trying to manipulate trying to normalize like it's the weirdest thing to watch a white person especially a white person with power tell me about democracy and fairness and treatment of you know getting everybody straight and making sure you know you know, people have all these goods and services, but the truth of the matter is they're constantly conquering. They're constantly taking over nations and flipping them and changing them and manipulating them all at the same time. Tell this is good for you. This is good for you. Yeah. I'm going to kill some of your people because they don't know how to act. And then the rest of y'all who know how to act, it's going to be good for you. This stuff is, it's okay to live this way. Don't worry about it. We got you. You know, we're going to put this thing into place. We're going to set everything up for you. It's going to be great. Anyone who doesn't like it, we're going to have to go ahead and kill them. But it's okay, though. We're going to feed you and clothe you and do all these things. Don't worry about it. We're going to give you things to read. And we're going to have a whole wonderful structure. And we're going to be able to fly there and vacation. And it's going to be wonderful for you. But we're going to have to kill these people, though, because they don't like what we're trying to do. They don't think that we belong here. They don't think that we should monitor and control and maintain the planet. What I just said, in my opinion, when someone brings up anything about constant, about, it's just so ridiculous. I just can't, can my brain is killing me right now. But anybody talking about constitutions and rights and freedoms and what should or should be done, is it is it is absolutely ridiculous. But I I I'll pause right there. Uh, T, did you have anything? I know we got a few minutes left here, or or D for that matter. If you want to uh, say anything, either, 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 or either, either of you. I appreciate that. That was right on point. Um, you know, it's something that I have, you know, when you talk about constitutional law, just law, period, it, it's ironic to me that, and this is, this I guess, goes to support the illusion that they have to create of justice or fairness, however you want to position that. Uh, you have... The codif codification of all these laws yet I think even the most uh, quote unquote non-woke person knows that these laws aren't being followed to a degree so it's interesting that even knowing that people still buy into it constitutional law knowing that 
without getting into too much substance about it, but knowing that <clears throat> constitutional law is, hasn't been followed since pretty much it was, uh, it, it was a 17, what, 1789 one that was ratified? That was it. It's never been followed. And even before that, so it's just interesting that the structure of the system, how great great the illusion and I was talking to in the paradox test on this about the sorcery you know the fact that the only people the people that run the system that have to give you a, a certain dichotomy a certain illusion of how things uh, should be but also it's almost like the, the matrix I said you know we had the first matrix it was too perfect it wasn't believable so we had to come out with well, 2.0, 3.0, and inject a little bit of pain into the system, you know, more, more cause and effect, more consequence for it. Maybe not following the rules correctly or not doing things the way that majority of people do them to make it feel real. Uh, so I, there's something I got to examine some more, but I just find it funny that all these laws, are, I mean, well, the question, the question, is this to you, the question yeah. is this to you, can you negotiate with monsters? Does a zebra negotiate with a lion? Like, is there a negotiation with these animals? That's all I'm trying to, that's, that's my whole point. So to try to, to try to humanize them, to try to, to try from, and I think a lot of it's due because people watch a lot of movies and read a lot of books about how the monsters can be negotiated with because they, they put that in these stories in people's brains. You don't you can't negotiate with monsters and animals. You you are what you are. I think we it's that's a hard position, but I'll stop. My bad. No, that's 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 uh he's right on point. You can't you can't negotiate with a monster. But they probably look at us as monsters too. <laughs> so that's the ironic part about it. Definitely. But you have a black person try to t convince you that these people are somehow quote unquote civilized. That's right. their word, right? Like they'll convince you that oh we can go do this, we can go do that. It's like what what are you what are you talking about? Based off of what evidence? Where are the facts at? Give me the data. You know that these are monsters. So how do you do negotiate they? and maneuver around I don't think monsters? They know that. It's ridiculous. I don't think they I don't think they know that. It's insanity. It's the whole wolf in sheep's clothing thing. You know. The uh, the so called devil, which it is the archetype, and I don't believe in it, but it you know, when he sat there and offered Jesus the the world just just think about that. Now this is <laughs> this is something and this, I'm gonna make the correlation. Now God so called created the devil, right? But yet he charges you with the responsibility to to resist it and fight against it. So in other words, the system creates the demons and the, the the oppression that you have to deal with and then charges you with fighting against it, but uh but in a benevolent type of way they present it to you. Uh this system as if it's the best thing that since, you know, sliced bread. I agree. I think what I think what people are thinking is that oh we can we can just take it from them. Or we can just borrow it for a while, right? They may leave or something, and we can just keep keep it keep it keep it to our keep it for ourselves. People are people are delusional. Yeah, we're all delusional. So agreed. Just the varying degrees. <laughs> agreed. Didn't you say earlier that we wasn't mentally ill? <laughs> <laughs> I sure did. I got to hold you to that because uh, that's what I mean by neurosis. It's a functional way of dealing with something that you're forced to deal with. You just you just make sense out of it because you, you don't have any other choice unless you don't want to survive or what you know to be survival until something else presents itself. So there you go. Even though you know that there's something wrong, I think that there's a lot of black people uh 
people that's that's in our classification that then knows that there's something wrong, there's something going on, but obviously um they feel different ways about it. Like just just like what we saying on this program, people may strongly disagree with and think that it's foolish and it doesn't mean anything and that it doesn't that they just talking and da 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 and that's what I mean. Like it becomes so anti that people become totally upset with each other until we can't even see a clear view about what the system is and what they, you can't even get to the point where we can exchange views properly because we're too busy talking bad about each other the energy is off and that we can't even get to the point where we're trying to solve this problem in a more constructive way so because we disagree with each other about how to deal with the system of racism and white supremacy you ever been to a um you ever you ever never mind i i said that for later <laughs> I said that for later. I know we getting. I know we getting was, close. That was a good one. I was waiting for it. I could feel it. <laughs> nah. <laughs> uh, we are we are at the end of the program. Uh, so we do appreciate all our listeners. Uh, again, we appreciate Black Talk Radio and Mr. Scotty Reed um, for the platform. Definitely go to BTR Community. Again, we're on first and third Tuesdays. I'm um, first and third Tuesdays at nine. Uh, PM Eastern uh, every month. This is Paradox. This is D. And T. Till next time. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>